Hello and welcome to this video on Trackit migration. So when you were downloading your software and licenses and things, you should have been able to download or have access to a migration utility. And this migration utility needs to be run on your Trackit 11.4 server. So we're going to go ahead and put this on the 11.4 server and we're going to run it. You may get a typical user account control screen here. The first installer screen here talks about extracting the files, where it's going to extract them, and that you're going to need credentials in order to be able to access the databases, which is true. So we're going to hit install. Again, while we're waiting for this to complete, we need to make sure that we're running this on our Trackit 11.4 server. That's very important so that we can access all the files and all the settings that need to be migrated over. Once the install completes, you'll see a screen like this. The screen explains to you which items will be migrated and which items cannot be migrated. So you can go through this and make sure you understand all the details about the migration. Once you understand all of that, you can click the checkbox here and click Next. So I'm not going to go over each one of these, but in general, basically the migration tool will migrate table data and things like settings or policies or things like that are things that are going to have to be reconfigured but this tool will generate some reports for you that will make a list of the settings you had in the old system so that you can use those reports to go through and make sure you reconfigure those same settings in the new system. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Here's where we're going to specify the credentials and the server information for the Trackit 11.4 system and our new target system. So I'm going to just go ahead and keep Windows authentication because I'm logged in as an administrator. If you don't know your SQL Server name, that's something you're really going to have to find out. You can find out in the session settings inside Track 11.4, or if you talk to your database administrator or your Track administrator, they should know. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my 11.4 server name and my database name. Track it underscore data was the default name for 11.4, so that's probably what yours is if you didn't change it. I'm going to go ahead and test the connection here. And it's successful. Good. So now I'm going to put in my new Trackit installation server name and my database name. And I'm going to test that connection. And that is also successful. Notice it shows the version number of the source and destination. One very important point here is that you need to make sure the TCP protocol is enabled for each SQL server. And in many cases when you're installing SQL Express, this is not enabled by default. So you're going to want to make sure that that is enabled either by talking to your track administrator or your database administrator to make sure. I can show you really quickly how it is on this server. Basically you would go to your start menu and you would look for something called the SQL Server Configuration Manager. And when you run that, you are going to get a screen that looks something like this. And you should see the SQL servers listed here on the left side. Let me expand this a little bit. Now in this test environment, I have my 11.4 instance and my brand new Trackit instance on the same server here. And you'll notice when I select one, it shows you the communication protocols used by that SQL server. And so for my 11.4 server here, Trackit TCP is enabled. And for Trackit 1 here, my TCP is also enabled. If it was disabled, all I would do is Right click on this, select properties, change the enabled from no to yes, hit OK, and then it's going to tell me I need to restart my SQL Server services in order to make that change happen. So really that's all you need to do. Once that's set and your credentials are in here, you should be ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and click next. So there are some options here for your migration. You can generate an advanced configuration report. Basically what that's going to do is go through all of your settings that won't migrate. So things like email policies, work order policies, event policies, things that are completely different in the new platform, it's going to go through those in the old system and generate a report for you that shows exactly how those settings were configured. Then you can use that report to reconfigure those settings in the new platform. Migrate data we have turned on as well. You have the option to migrate all work orders or migrate only open work orders. So that's an option for you. Along with that, you can decide to migrate all the attachments in the old system or migrate only the attachments that are in open work orders. Or if you don't want to migrate any attachments, you have that option as well. I'm going to go ahead and leave these settings the way they are right now. 
and hit start. Now once the migration tool starts, the first thing it's going to do is generate those reports we talked about. And once that is complete, the system will start going through and migrating each table one by one from the old system to the new system. So depending on how much data you have, this process could take anywhere from 15 minutes to a couple of hours, depending on how much data you have to migrate. Another important point I want to mention here is you can run this migration tool multiple times. So the system keeps track of which data it has moved from the old system to the new system. And so running it over and over again will not cause any problems or any duplicates. It will basically migrate just the things that it did not migrate before. So let's say, for example, you do a migration and one of your technicians goes in and adds a couple new work orders to the old system. Well, you can run the migration tool again and it will pull those work orders over. So you don't have to worry about it pulling duplicates in. So checking back in here, and we still have a little ways to go, but you can see how it lists each table and then whether it migrated successfully or not. If it did not migrate successfully, it will create a log, and at the end of the migration, there'll be a link to all the logs and all the reports. So we'll go ahead and pause here for a moment while we wait for this to complete. Okay, now we're back, and you can see that it migrated the last thing, and now it says migration completed successfully, Click here to open the log folder. If you go ahead and click on that, it'll give you a list of all the logs. And if you had any errors during any of these processes, then you'll be able to find the particular errors in each section. If you go back to the migration tool main folder here and look under advanced configuration, you'll find some PDF files in here. You may have more PDFs than I show here in my folder here, but these PDF reports contain lists of the settings that are not able to be migrated from your track at 11.4 installation. And you can use those reports to help you configure those similar settings in your new track at installation. And that is an overview of the track at migration process. For more videos in this training series, you can visit our documentation site at docs.bmc.com. If you forget where the documentation is, you can always click the help link in the upper right hand corner inside Trackit. Some other useful resources are the Trackit community where you can talk with other Trackit users and support representatives about how to get the most out of your product. You can reach that site at community.trackit.com. You can also reach our technical support directly by visiting support.trackit.com. And for general product information, you can always visit trackit.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video has been helpful to you.